Worksheet number 10 here is all about pH, and that's describing the hydronium ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration and how they are going to be related. So starting off with number one, the concentration of H3O plus, that's hydronium, in a sample of seawater is 2.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. Calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions. Remembering that Kw is uh, the concentration of hydronium and the concentration of hydroxide multiplied together, and so that is going to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So just using that equation, what we can do is we can say, okay, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th is going to be our hydronium concentration, right, that's this, this is our hydronium concentration, and that is 2 times 10 to the negative fifth, uh, negative fifth. Okay, and now we can use this to solve for the hydroxide concentration. So the hydroxide concentration here is simply something that you can um, you can calculate by dividing both sides by the hydronium ion concentration. And what you would find then is that the OH minus concentration, hydroxide concentration, is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 10th molar. So that would be C. So C is the right answer for number one. And then bouncing right off of number one, we're being asked for number two, based on your answer from problem number one, what is the pH of the seawater solution? So for pH, we need to remember that the P here in pH represents the negative log. So anytime you have a P there, that's going to represent negative log. And so when we say pH, what we're talking about is the negative log of the H plus concentration. Okay, so we really know that H plus, more realistically, is going to be the negative log here of the H 3O plus concentration, right? So when we say protons, we're sort of simplifying it. We're supposing that there's no water, but obviously this is happening in water. So that means that the real chemical species is H3O plus, okay? So here we have in the problem, we're given the H3O plus concentration. So in order to find the pH, what we need to do is take the negative log of that uh, hydronium concentration. So pH is going to be the negative log of this, 2.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. And if I do that, I would find that 4.7 is the correct answer for number two. Okay, so that's going to be my pH. So when I calculate this, my answer is 4.7. Number three says, spider silk self-assembles through shear forces and pH changes as it moves along a special duct inside the spider. That's pretty cool. The distal end of the duct has an H3O plus, or hydronium concentration, of 6.16 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. Okay, so here's our first important piece of information. What is the pH? Okay, that's what we're trying to find out. What is the pH needed to initiate spider silk self-assembly? So what we're trying to figure out is what the pH is if the hydronium concentration is 6.16 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. So once again, pH is the negative log of the hydronium concentration. Remembering that P represents negative log. And then H here is representing the, the hydronium concentration. So with pH, what we're finding is the negative log of the hydronium concentration. Well, we're given that. That's just this right here. So we're going to plug that in and go, go ahead and take the negative log of 6.16 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. And what that gives me then is the pH. So when I do that, I get 6.21 as my answer. So A is the correct answer for number three. 
So number four, we've got a virus capsid. And uh, we see here that the virus capsid has a diameter of 50 nanometers. When we dunk this virus into a, an acidic solution that has a pH of 6.21, what happens is the virus swells by about 2 nanometers, so it goes to a diameter of 52 nanometers. And so this happens because of the interactions between the proteins that hold together this capsid. So these, these interactions allow the capsid to swell just a little bit when uh, the capsid is subjected to an acidic pH. So now, if the concentration of hyd uh, hydroxide is between 1 times 10 to the negative 6th and 9.99 times 10 to the negative 6th molar, will any of the capsids be swollen? So here is the key question. Will any of the capsids be swollen? So if a capsid gets swollen, what that means is that we have reached a pH of 6.21. Okay. So what we need to determine is, are either of these going to give us a pH of around 6.21? If they are, then the capsid will swell. But if the pH is not low enough, then the capsid's not going to swell. So we need to figure out what the pH is for each of these, and that will allow us to compare it to the pH at which the capsid swells. So let's go ahead and do that. What I like to do for a problem like this is I like to say that the pH and plus the pOH equals 14. So immediately I recognize that if I know one, I have to know the other. So let's go ahead and solve the, for the pOH, okay? And that'll allow us to figure out what the pH is for either one of these. So we'll start out with 1 times 10 to the negative 6th. So remember now with the P there, what this is re, uh, representing is the negative log. So now instead of the hydronium concentration, we're going to take the negative log of the hydroxide concentration because we're dealing with OH minus here. So the concentration here of OH minus is, is going to be uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 6th molar. Okay. So this is just going to be a pOH of 6. All right. And then we're going to do this once more. I'm going to say that the negative log of 9.99 times 10 to the negative 6th is going to give me uh, a pH of About five. So these are the pOHs. So now let's go back to here and use this equation to figure out what the pHs are for each of these solutions. So we have here now pH is going to equal, and I'm just going to take this number and subtract it and bring it over to here. It's going to equal 14 minus the pOH. And the pOH here is 6. So that means that the pH equals 8. And then for this solution, if my pOH was 5, then 14 minus 5 is going to give me a pH of 9. Okay, This makes sense, right? Because my concentration of hydroxide goes up, and so my pH goes up because the solution becomes more basic. So now let's return to our initial question. We have a solution here whose pH is about 8, and then another solution uh, whose pH is about 9. So, um, so here we have a range of hydroxide concentrations, and here we result in a range of pHs. So the pH is going to be between 8 and 9, right? So it's between a pH of 8 and 9. And now we can return here to the question, Will any of the capsids be swollen? And the answer is no. The capsids will not be swollen because the pH is not low enough to cause the capsids to swell. The pH is all the way up here around 8 and 9. It's nowhere near uh, 6.21. So it's not low enough to allow the capsids to swell. So therefore the answer is going to be no uh, to that question. 
So that eliminates A and D. But now we need to figure out whether it's B or C. Because both of those have no in them. But now, let's address the second question. What is one pH in the range covered by your sample? So you know that the pH of the sample has to be, um, or, or the pH here of, of the sample, based on the hydronium, uh, hydroxide concentration, is going to be between 8 and 9. Okay, we just got that with this calculation. So if the pH is between 8 and 9, then that means that 8.02 is a pH that is within that range, and not 7.02. So that leaves us with C as being the correct answer for number four. So no, the capsids will not swell because the pHs, pHs here are not low enough. And 8.02 is the only pH that's within this range and not 7.02. So that leaves us with C as the only correct answer. All right, for number five, we've got a dilute solution of HCl that is being prepared by mixing pure concentrated HCl with water to give a final concentration of 120 millimolar HCl. And then it's asking what is the concentration of hydronium ions in the solution? So the first thing we have to recognize is that hydrochloric acid is one of our strong acids. Okay, So when we have a certain amount of acid of HCl, essentially 100% of that acid is going to electrolytically dissociate into H plus and chloride. Okay. So here we have uh, 120 millimolar of, of this acid in water. And what's going to happen is 100% of this acid is going to split up into its ions. So it's going to dissociate. And the hydrogen here is going to um, come off and go to the water. And so we get H3O plus. And then the chloride is just going to be left as chloride. And that's going to be aqueous Cl minus. So let's suppose we have a liter of this solution. So we made up this 120 millimolar solution and we have a big beaker sitting around so we made one liter of this solution. What does that mean? That means that with the molarity equation if we have um, uh, 120 millimolar, let's just go ahead and exp express that in molar so that's 0, 0 0.120 molar that's 120 millimolar. All I did is divided it by 1,000. Okay. That means I have 0 0.120 moles of HCl for every one liter of solution. Okay. I'm just picking one liter of solution here because it's a very easy number to work with. This way I can just show that I have 0 0.120 moles of HCl. It really doesn't matter what volume you use because when we come over here to this side of the of the reaction where we've made our H3O plus that we're trying to find the concentration of, whatever volume we had here is going to be the same volume we end up here with, right? We didn't add any water or any other solution to it, so our volume does not change, okay? But I just went ahead and chose one liter here so that we can convert this into moles and work with something that we're familiar with. So if we have 0 0.120 moles of HCl, and we know that 100% of that HCl electrolytically dissociates into protons and chlorides, then we know that there is going to be a pretty much full conversion of HCl into H3O plus and Cl minus. Okay. So that dissociation results in a 1 to 1 mole ratio of HCl to H3O+. Okay? So for every HCl molecule, we make an H3O plus molecule. Okay? So then you can just expand that out to moles. If we had a mole of HCl, then we would make a mole of H3O+. Plus. It's very simple. Just a mole of H, uh, HCl makes a mole of H3O+. Plus. But do we have a mole? No, we don't quite have a mole. We have 0 0.120 moles of HCl. So how much H3O plus do we make? Well, let's see here. Let me just write out our mole to mole ratio. 
and lo and behold we find that we make 0 0.120 moles of H3O plus just like we would have thought so we have 0 0.120 moles of H3 uh, excuse me HCl and we make 0 0.120 moles of H3O plus okay so now we say okay well I had a liter right remember I, I said I had a liter and my volume didn't change I didn't add any liquid I didn't take any liquid away so if I started with a liter that means that in the, at the end of the day I still have a liter so now if I want to calculate my molarity uh, my molarity of H3O plus that's just going to be 0 0.120 moles of H3O plus divided by a liter. Okay, That's why I said it doesn't matter, because you end up with uh, whatever volume that you originally assigned. Uh, so it didn't matter what volume you, you chose, it just matters that you didn't change that volume. Okay, And what that results in is a molarity of 0 0.120 molar. Okay? So all we're saying here is that the, uh, the HCl completely splits up into H plus and Cl minus. And of course the H plus makes hydronium. Okay? And then for every mole of HCl, we get a mole of H3O plus. So we only had 120 millimoles, uh, millimolar uh, HCl, so the result is going to be 120 millimolar H3O plus. So the answers here give them uh, are given in molar, so we just take millimoles and convert into moles by dividing by a thousand, and that gives us 0 0.120 molar H3O plus. So that gives us C as our correct answer for number five. Number six gives us a couple different sodium hydroxide concentrations. So we've got one times ten to the zero molar, which is just going to be one molar, and one times ten to the negative one molar sodium hydroxide. And it asks us to determine what the pH difference is. So let's start out by looking at the chemical equation. We've got sodium hydroxide in water, electrolytically dissociating into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Okay? And because sodium hydroxide is a strong base, then pretty much 100% of the sodium hydroxide is going to dissociate into these ions, the sodium and the hydroxide. So that's why we can say that however much sodium hydroxide we had, how, I guess however many moles, if you wanted to be specific, you could say however many moles of sodium hydroxide we had, that's how many moles of sodium ions we're going to end up with and hydroxide ions we're going to end up with. Okay, so those numbers are going to be the same. Therefore, when we have a concentration of sodium hydroxide, that concentration is the same for the sodium and for the hydroxide, because they're one-to-one -one mole ratios, and the sodium hydroxide pretty much completely converts over to sodium and hydroxide. So when we're saying we've got one molar sodium hydroxide, we are saying we have one molar hydroxide. And then 0.1 molar uh, sodium hydroxide means we have 0.1 molar uh, hydroxide ions. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what the pOHs are for these solutions. And uh, we can use that to calculate the pH. So here we go. The p, of course, means we're going to take the negative log. So we're taking the negative log of the hydroxide concentration and that's pOH so the pOH for the one molar sodium hydroxide is zero now let's take the negative log of the one times ten to the negative one molar uh, concentration so that once again gives us pOH and that's now positive one okay so I wanted to draw your attention to this because the log of 1 times 10 to the negative 1 is negative 1. Okay, so this right here is negative 1. But then when you take the negative of that, 
you make positive 1. Okay, so the POH here is positive 1. Now, let's come over here to this equation where pH plus POH is 14 and see what the pH is. Because remember, if you know one, you automatically know the other because they both have to add to 14. So our POH for the one molar sodium hydroxide solution was zero. So this POH is just zero, and therefore the pH is 14. We have that here, pH equals 14. Now let's go over to the 0.1 molar solution, and we found here that the POH is one, positive 1. So therefore the pH plus 1 has to equal 14. And the, the way that that's satisfied is if the pH here is 13. And we see that here, so the pH equals 13. So what's the difference in pH between these two solutions? Well, the difference in pH is 1. And why does it work out so conveniently? because let me draw your attention here to these exponents. The log is asking basically what is 10, what power is 10 raised to, okay? So in this situation we got 10 raised to the zeroth power and therefore our POH was zero. And here um, 10 is raised to the negative one power so uh, so the log of 1 times 10 to the negative 1 is negative 1. And since we negated that, our pH becomes positive 1. So if you see this number is the same for two solutions, and uh, you see that the exponent on the 10 is different, then you automatically know your pH difference because the pH involves, or, or pOH, involves the log, and the log is just looking at what this exponent is. So if your exponent changed by 1, then your pH and pOH are going to change by 1 as well. Okay. So if this had gone out to something like from 1 times 10 to the 0 to 1 times 10 to the negative 2, then your pH difference is simply going to be 2. And it's it's it works the same if you had if you were going say from 1 to negative 3 then your pH difference would be 4 um, so you just look at what that difference is and you can tell approximately uh, what your pH difference is going to be now be mindful that here it works out that it's 1.0 on both sides uh, or uh, for both solutions so it's not going to be exact if these numbers are different but you can still use it just as a back of the envelope or sort of mental math calculation to give you a, a way of figuring out approximately what the difference in pH is going to be. So, but if these two numbers are the same, then all you do is look at the exponent. Okay? And the difference in the exponents is going to tell you what the difference in pH is going to be because you're taking the log of it and that's what you're figuring out. So A is the answer for number six. Bouncing off of number six, number seven asks, are these solutions in the previous question acidic or basic? So let me remind you that in order to be acidic, I need to have an excess of acid, right? So excess H plus or H3O plus, okay? What does it mean to be basic? Well, if we have something that's basic, we have an excess of base, or OH minus. All right, so do we have an excess of H plus or an excess of OH minus in number six? Well, of course, we're going to have an excess of OH minus because we're dumping sodium hydroxide into the solution. So we don't have any acid in this solution. It's only sodium hydroxide, and therefore, of course, we're going to have an excess of base, so that's going to result in a basic solution. So number seven is B. Moving on to number nine, we have an industrial glaze here that is acidic, and we want to figure out how much sodium hydroxide we need to add in order to completely neutralize the acid. So we're going to completely neutralize it to where the pH equals seven. 
Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at what it means for pH to equal 7. So when the pH equals 7, so when the pH equals 7, the concentration of H3O plus equals the concentration of OH minus in the solution. Okay? So if we have the same volume of the solution, and what, what we can glean from this is that the moles of acid has to equal the moles of base. So if we start out at first with an excess of acid, then to get us to this point, we need to add some more base until the moles of acid and the moles of base are the same. And at that point, we have completely neutralized the solution, and the, and the pH will be up to 7. So we start out with a pH of 1.23 uh, with, with this industrial glaze. And, um, and so let's go ahead and take a moment and figure out what the hydronium concentration is when the pH is 1.23. So let's remember that if pH equals 1.23, then that means that the negative log of the hydronium concentration equals 1.23. So now let's take the anti-log of this and figure out what the hydronium concentration is. So in order to do that, let's move this negative sign over to here. So we're going to get negative, so I'm going to go like this, negative 1.23 equals the log of the hydronium concentration. Okay, and now we can take the anti-log. So the next step is is to say, okay, well, if I want to figure out what the log, uh, what the argument inside the log is, I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to raise 10 to the negative 1.23 and then that's going to equal 10 to the log of the hydronium concentration. So by doing this, this now cancels my log. In other words, it performs the anti-log on the log, and I can go ahead and calculate it. So 10 to the power of negative 1.23 is going to be 0 0.05888. So now the hydronium concentration is 0 0.0588. We'll just leave it there. Uh, well, actually, I'll give you another decimal point, 8. And that's molar. So we have our hydronium concentration. And this would tell us how many moles of acid we have. That's right, because that's what we want to figure out. We need to know how many moles of acid we have so that we know how many moles of base to add to get these equal. Um, so we know how many moles of acid or H3O plus we have if we had a liter of this, right? This is moles per liter. But we in fact actually have a little bit more than a liter. We have 1.23 liters. So let's go ahead and multiply this. Well, let me remind you first that this is moles per liter. Okay. Now we can multiply this by 1.23 liters. So multiplying this by 1.23 gives us 0 0.0724 moles of H3O+. Okay, so if we have 0 0.0724 moles of H3O+, how much base do we need to add in order to neutralize that many moles of H3O plus? Well, we need to add 0 0.0724 moles of OH minus. That's the hydroxide. So that's how much base we need to add. So that means that we need to add the same amount of base, 0 0.0724 moles of OH minus. Okay. So this is what I meant by saying that the moles of acid and the moles of base have to be equal here. When we're bringing the pH up to 7, when we're neutralizing the solution, if we have an excess of acid, we need to put in that many moles of, 
of base in order to neutralize that acid, turn it into water, right, and, and that will neutralize the solution. So we need 0 0.0724 moles of hydroxide. Okay, how do we get that? Let's come back up here to the problem. The problem says that we have a solution of 1.23 molar sodium hydroxide. Okay, well, why don't we go ahead and use the molarity equation and see if we can figure out how many milliliters we need. And I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So molarity is moles of sodium hydroxide per liter. And now we have our molarity, we have two of the two of the variables and we can solve for the third. So we have the molarity. Molarity is 1.23 molar. So 1.23 molar. And then we know how many moles we need. We need 0 0.0724 moles. 0.0724 moles of NaOH. That's how many moles we need in order to neutralize this acid. And now we just need to figure out how many liters of it we need in order to give us that many moles. So I'm just going to go ahead and take 0 0.0724 and divide it by 1.23 to solve for the liters. And then the, what the liters gives me is... It, uh, it gives me here 0 0.0589 liters. So then just converting this in milliliters, I get 58.9 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So that's going to give me enough hydroxide ions to neutralize all the hydroniums, okay, and bring the pH up to 7. So the amount that we need is then 58.9, and that corresponds to D. So D is the correct answer for number 9. Number 10 says, how many grams of sodium hydroxide should be dissolved in 20 milliliters of water to yield a solution with a pH of 7.5? So let's ignore the grams for now, and let's just ask the question, how many moles of sodium hydroxide do we need to dissolve in 20 milliliters of water to yield a solution of pH 7.5? And why do we want to do that? at first, well, we want to do that because molarity is moles per liter, and we can get molarity out of pH, okay? So then, of course, once we find the moles of sodium hydroxide, it's trivial to find the grams, but the hard part's getting the moles. So let's go ahead and do this. How do we get the molarity of sodium hydroxide out of the pH? Well, First of all, we have to recognize that sodium hydroxide, being a strong base, is going to electrolytically dissociate in water to make Na plus and OH minus. And it's going to do this completely. So when you dunk sodium hydroxide in water, it's going to completely dissociate into aqueous sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So whatever sodium hydroxide you started with, 100% of it's going to turn into sodium and OH minus. So when we look at how many uh, how many moles of sodium hydroxide we have, we are also looking at how many moles of hydroxide we have. And this is our this is our molecule of interest right here, hydroxide. So um, what's going to happen here is when you put sodium hydroxide in water, the concentration of OH minus is going to go up, obviously because this is going to split up into sodium and hydroxide, so the hydroxide concentration will be elevated. And uh, what we can do is we can say, okay, perhaps we can find the pOH for this concentration, and, um, and how can we relate pH and pOH? Well, let me remind you that there's this equation, pH e, uh, plus pOH are going to equal 14. All right, so we know what pH we want. We know what pH we want. We want a pH of 7.5, okay? And that tells us automatically what the pOH that would correspond to, okay? So then this pOH will give us the hydroxide concentration, and we can use that hydroxide concentration 
to tell us how many moles of sodium hydroxide we need in order to give us that concentration. Okay, so let's go ahead and see this in action. So pH is going to be 7.5, we have that from the problem, plus some pOH is going to give us 14. So if I take 14 and subtract from it 7.5, I'm going to get a pOH of 6.5, 6.5. So now let's remember that the P here means negative log. So now we have a way of looking at the negative log of the hydro uh, hydroxide concentration. So the hydroxide concentration um, is going to be uh, is going to be found like this. OH minus. We're going to take the anti-log. 10 to the negative 6.5. There we go. We have our hydroxide concentration now. So let me go ahead and grab my calculator. So the hydroxide concentration is going to be 10 to the negative 6.5. And that's going to equal 3.162 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. Okay, so let me go ahead and bring this up a little bit. So now we have a molarity, and let's look back at the problem. We also have a volume. We have a volume of solution. Okay, and what can we do? We can use the molarity equation, we'll come back to the molarity equation, and solve for the moles of sodium hydroxide. So the concentration we're shooting for is 3.162 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. Because that's the concentration that's going to give us a pOH of 6.5. And then that pOH is what gives us the pH of 7.5. Okay, so it's a little bit, little bit of a two-step reasoning. But what you're trying to get is a pH of 7.5 and you know that pH and pOH are related, so you found the pOH to be 6.5, and so we took that pOH, we did the antilog, and we found that the hydroxide concentration that we need in order to give us that pH is 3.162 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. So that's going to correspond to some moles of sodium hydroxide over our volume. And our volume here is 20 milliliters, so remember molarity is in moles per liter. So we'll go ahead and express that in liters. And we'll just suppose for the sake of simplicity that by adding some sodium hydroxide, we're not changing the volume of the solution. So, um, so it just stays as 0 0.020 liters as the volume of the solution. Okay, And now we can solve for the moles. So with the moles, we're going to take this 3.162 times 10 to the negative 7th and multiply it by 0.02. So our moles are going to equal 6.324 times 10 to the negative 9th. Okay. So now we have the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Simply, in order to turn it into grams, we have to convert it into uh, grams with the molar mass. So the last step here is going to be to take 6.324 times 10 to the negative ninth moles of sodium hydroxide and multiply it by the molar mass. And that molar mass is 40 uh, grams per mole. Okay, moles cancel. And now we are left with in, uh, in grams of sodium hydroxide. So this is going to be 0 0.25 times 10 to the negative 6th grams. And so when you see something like this, remember that this indicates micrograms, so that means that the answer is 0 
micrograms and that would be that would be D so D is the correct answer for number 10 and there we go alright and that was quiz number or worksheet number 10